Okay, hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Victor and I'm going to be your anchor for this training. So if you have been following my channel for some time, you will know that I have taken quite some cloud certifications in AWS in Google. And currently I want to be looking at the Associate Data Practitioner Certification from Google. From Google. It's a fairly new certification that launched sometime uh, in the last six, seven months, I think early 2005. And it has quite a lot of content to cover for the exam. Now, most persons would have been doing data analytics, uh, data science, machine learning. That's to say you're using tools like Tableau, uh, Power BI, Excel, SPSS. Uh, all of these tools are basically offline tools you could use to collect data, uh, transform your data, analyze them, do visualizations, make reports, have insights so that you can report them. Now, if you want to move that a step further and start using cloud service providers to do all of those, especially when your data is large data sets, especially when your data is in millions of rows, that is when you need to upskill to become cloud data certified. And this associate certification will let you know how to secure, how to manage your data in the cloud. You need skills like data injection, transformation, pipeline management, analysis, machine learning, visualization. Uh, you're going to be learning concepts like IaaS, that is infrastructure as a service, PaaS, platform as a service, and software as a service. Now, the exam, it's not much of a hard exam. You just need to understand most of the concepts. You need to use the Cloud Boost platform to learn, and that's going to help you actually prepare for your exam. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. You could like, you could send me a comment and let me know what you think or what you feel. And also, you could share this to your friends. Okay, back to the Associate Data Practitioner Certification. Now it has about four sections. The first section is a, the first section is about data preparation and ingestion. And this covers about 30% of the exam. For the exam, you need to be able to differentiate between different ways you can manipulate data, especially when we look at concepts like extract, transform, load, extract, load, transform, extract, transform, load transform this is older this is newer and this is hybrid so here we're saying we're trying to say how do we collect our data from multiple sources and actually transform them transform them would mean take for instance you have a uh, data let's say height height of individuals and let's say some people are going to have height in meters, some people have height in feet, some people have height in meter in centimeters. so you need to do some data transformation in a format that will be okay for you to run your analysis. That's what data transformation is all about. Converting data from one form to the other in a way that makes it very okay for you to run your analysis. Because when you start doing visualization, when you start doing your report, you're going to do them in a standardized format. And of course, for this one, you do uh, transformation like two step. You first extract the data, transform it, load it, then do a further transformation. Of course, you're going to learn about all of the data storage services. How do you transfer data from one point to the other? And of course, you can use data cleaning tools like Cloud Data Fusion, BigQuery. This is a visualization analytics uh, service. Also, SQL for querying your data and of course, Dataflow. You're also going to learn about extracting and loading your data into appropriate cloud storage systems. You're going to be considering different things. You're going to be looking at what kind of data you have, what format is your data in, is it in CSV, JSON, Apache Pacque, is it Apache Avro? How is your data coming in? We're talking about most of the times data that are in different formats. Now, you also need to understand the different cloud types that Google have. Google have the regular storage, spanner, big table, fire store. Google have quite a lot when it comes to data types, data platforms, and of course, how you are going to handle that as a data analyst. The next thing the exam is going to test you is how to do analysis and presentation. 
for instance, if you use tools like Tableau, Excel, Power BI, SPSS, all of those tools are offline tools. A few of them like Tableau, you can still use them in the cloud. You need to be able to run analysis. And anytime we say analysis, we mean that we collect data. We want to put them in a format that people can make sense out of fit. And of course, present that data. Know how you can present such kind of data without doing some what we call uh, uh, kind of, uh, what's the word again? EDA, exploratory data analysis. And when we say exploratory data analysis, we mean we want to explore, we want to understand. That's what you call analysis. And things like doing some comparative analysis is what a data analyst is going to do. So Jupyter Notebook, if you're used to Python, if you've been programming or doing data analytics or science with using Python, you know of the Colab tool. So in Google Cloud, you can now use the Colab Enterprise because Google owns Colab, right? They are the owners of the Colab projects. Of course, you're going to use a tool like Luca Studio. Luca Studio is an awesome tool that you can use to visualize and create awesome dashboard. I'm going to show you some uh, the learning platform. So you can use the Cloud Skill Boost if you need access. You could let me know. You could also purchase your units, your points, and uh, have access to the entire learning material that is going to help you prepare for your exam. So this is on Google Cloud platform for learning, for preparation, for exams. So you have this module one, intro to data engineering, BigQuery data, local dashboard and report. If you check this prepared data for local dashboard and report, which is this particular one, you're going to see that they have a lot of labs on quick start, sorting data in Luca Studio, uh, merging results from different explorers in Luca, Luca functions and operators, uh, then of course dashboard. Now this is what a typical self-paced lab for Google looks like. Once you get into the lab, if you start it, it will load the exact cloud GCP platform for you. So for each challenge each task that you complete right all the instructions are well detailed for each challenge each task that you work on and you complete you're going to have an increased score in the subsequent series for this particular course i'm going to be working on some of the labs so that you see what the google cloud platform is like in order to become a data analyst in the cloud right so it has detailed instruction you could follow so for each one you complete, you can check your progress. And if you got it, it's going to mark it green. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. So for each one that you get correctly, it's going to create a, uh, a, a score, a mark, right? Which is going to be accumulated to 100 points at the end of the day. And once you get your... The, the badges, once you complete the courses, you're going to get a badge, which is shareable to LinkedIn, to any of your profile or your CV. And once you're done with it, you're going to get a badge. Okay, let's try it down with the exam curriculum. Now for section three, you're going to be learning about data pipeline orchestration. Now here, we're trying to see most of the times for data analysts, for data practitioners, data is going to come from multiple sources. You can be having data coming from on-prem, from the cloud, from your website, from your e-commerce platform, from different sources. So how do you do all of those transformation in the cloud? How do you schedule? How do you automate? How do you monitor most of those busy data pre-processing tasks? Pre-processing will mean all of the kind of things you do before you actually now start analyzing and processing that data set. That's one advantage of doing data analytics or science or machine learning in the cloud because you can do quite a lot of automation. It's not manual like you have it when you're using the regular tools like Power BI, Excel, and all of that. Because if you use most of those tools, you have limits, except you're going to be using the enterprise platforms for those systems to be able to automate your entire pipeline right from when you're going to be collecting the data to when you are actually doing your reports. 
Now, in section four, it's going to be about data management. So data management here, we're looking at access control. So it's an offshoot of some of the things you'll be learning in Google Cloud Digital Leader in ACE, that is Associate Cloud Engineer. Here, you want to understand IAM. So you can't, you can't learn cloud without understanding identity and access management because for all the data that you're going to have in the cloud, people need to own them. You need to have rules. Right, you need to have permissions, right? Some of those rules are going to be basic rules, predefined rules, permissions. So you are going to compare different ways, uh, methods that access control can be used for cloud storage. And of course, you can determine when to share data using analytics hub. Now, one important thing is also configuring lifecycle management, considering different things like frequency of data usage, retention. Now, the thing is that when you have data in the cloud, you are going to assess them differently. It's just like in a bank. You typically have access to your bank statements once in a while. So most of the times, once in two months or once in three months, once in six months, request for your bank statement. So that data, the frequency of access of that data it's uh, different from some other kind of data that you might want to assess. So data most of the times in the cloud have different frequency of access. So you need to understand lifecycle management. So how do you move data from a state where you're going to frequently access it to a state where you're not going to frequently access it to a state where you rarely access it to a state where we can call archive, where you just access it once in a while right so you have quite a lot then of course for access control key management encryption these are very important concepts that you're going to be learning in the associate data practitioner so what is going to be next for you after this certification you're going to start going into uh, google cloud machine learning engineer or google cloud ai engineer all of those advanced certification is what you want to look out in the cloud after you've exhausted and you've passed your associate data practitioner. So let me know what you think. I'm going to be bringing more additional series to this. For your exam prep, Google provides a sample exam uh, that is just 22 questions, right? Though the exam is uh, about 50 to 60 questions, depending on how well you're doing, if you need a voucher, if you need discount, if you want to join our mentorship program, you could drop a comment session or if you have questions, don't forget to drop that and I will get to you. Now, this is a 22 question, a sample question that mimics what the exam looks like, right? I will drop description to this also in the comment section of this video. Of course, subsequently, I'm going to be bringing more exam like questions. I'm going to be bringing uh, practice exams. I'm going to be bringing a learnings from the entire content of this course. So the entire content for this course is typified in about um, eight modules that covers fundamentals of data engineering, BigQuery, dashboards and reports, AI and machine learning in the cloud, infrastructure, cost billing reports, then fundamentals of cloud security, then data migration tools, right? So thank you very much. See you in the next series. And subsequently, you're going to hear from me.